watching live we are one kingdom ministries and we're so glad that you're watching us we're so glad to be here another year another year to serve you another year to ultimately serve God and serve you in all that we do and to accommodate his plan <laughs> accommodate God's plan and we welcome you on this day, this Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Now you're going to be put in the hands. And the next voice you will hear will be the leaders to We Are One Kingdom Ministry, the visionary Brian Dupour, my amazing husband. Amen. Every time I look over our lives, I see that God has caused us to triumph. Thank you, Jesus. And that's the type of God we serve, Thank a you, God Lord. of battle. Yes, oh, yeah, God. he's a God of battle. The shout of a king is among us. He is roaring. He is zealous about his bride. Thank and you, I thank Jesus. God that he loves us so much. I want to encourage you um, this year. Thank I want you, to Jesus. encourage you. A lot of us. Uh, in this new year, 2022, you, um, a lot of you were scared to even enter into this year. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just be honest. Yes, uh, every other year, we used to be so celebratory about, oh, we made resolutions, but 
2021 and taught you that your plans cannot be trusted and then your resolutions don't resolve or amount to anything. Exactly. Oh my God, Come but on. only the plans of God should Come be on. established. Yes, God. And so many of us came into 2022 with some uncertainty, some fear and some things like that. But we're going to deal with those things uh, yes, over the course of this year because battles belongs to God. The victory belongs to God. Yes, and because God. we're in him, we have victory. I come to tell you that the battle is not yours, yes, but it God. is still God. That's oh it. my God. The battle is not yours, but it is still God's battle. Thank it's you, still Jesus. his victory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We'll turn to Psalms 44. We can start at verse one. And the Bible reads it as this. We have heard with our ears. Yes. Lord. Oh God, our fathers have told us what work thou did in their days, in the times of old. How thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand and plantest them. How thou did afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Yes, God. Neither did they own arm save them, but thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. Yes. Thou art my king, and, O God, command deliverance. For Come Jacob, on. out there, I want you to, I want you to say, command deliverance. Command deliverance. And put your name in there. I want you to make this personal. God, command deliverance God, for command me. Command deliverance for me. Thank God, you. my family needs it. Command deliverance for me. Yes. My yes, body yes. needs it. God, command deliverance for me. God, that word command actually means to ordain. Yes, 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 yes. It means to establish, to mm. support, mm. to cause to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you will. So what the psalmist was saying to his king, he recognized him as king. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. He not only recognized God as God, but he also recognized mm. him as king. That's good. That's good. Right In that time, the kings were known for battle. Yeah, 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 you yeah. cannot have a kingdom apart from battle. battle. Come on. You had to go out and drive out enemies in order to take possession of the land and to establish mm. it as a kingdom. Mm. That's good. So the psalmist recognized not only God as God sitting on high, but he recognized him as king because God is a God of battle. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he seeks to possess. Mm, mm, mm. He seeks to take full possession and our king and our God drives out the enemies before us. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. I come to tell you that we do serve a God of battle. Thank you, Father. We serve a God that's no coward. So that word command means to give an order. To give instruction or to appoint to a divine role or position. It's to be said with authority. Only somebody with a position of authority can give an order or a command. So the psalmist is saying right here, God, I want you to command, please command, give an order of deliverance, God. Cause deliverance to stand. Yes. Establish deliverance for me. Appoint yes, deliverance God. for me. Ordain deliverance for me. Mm. That word deliverance also means victory. That's what we get our term victory for in this um, text right here. He was saying, God, I need your salvation. Thank you. Command, ordain salvation for me. I need victory in this. So the psalmist was saying, God, I need you to ordain victory for me. Because I know if you ordain it, you command it, you establish victory, then it will be so. Yes, God. Enemies will not be able to stand before us. Why? Because you have ordained victory. 
Sin cannot stand before us. You know why? Because God has ordained victory. Shame yes. cannot beat you Come down on. and guilt cannot drive you crazy or mad. Why? Because God has ordained victory. This year, you're going to leave behind fornication. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because God has ordained victory. You're going to yes, leave behind hatred this year. You know why? Because God has ordained victory. You're not going to come into the year 22 with envy. You know why? Because God has ordained victory over that. So this Come year, on. we're going to go on. throughout this. I'm talking about God is going to drive all of that out of our hearts. Yes, all God. that envy, that jealousy, that witchcraft, that adultery, the corruption, that lack of self-control. Amen. Somebody be honest. Come on. Talk to me. All that ambition, that selfish ambition, the one that's seeking followers. Amen. Talk to me. Talk to me. We're going to crucify that this year because the king of kings has ordained victory for us. There is no victory in no other name but the name of Jesus. Now that we have established that, I want you to turn with me uh, to the book of 1 Samuel. We're going to get into our text, the book of 1 Samuel. And while you're turning there, um, there's some things I want us to remember. And it's going to be our theme throughout the whole year. I want us to remember these things. If yes, you have a, a pen or a paper, Lord, I want God. you to write this down. These are keys to your victory this year. Mm -hmm. These are keys to your victory this year. Come the on. first one is to always remember the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Oh, yes. You have to remember the name of the Lord. We already went through the series of God's name. You have to remember his name. His name is power. His name is victory. He is a provider. He is a protector. He is a healer. This is the great God that we serve. And if you want to have victory in this new year, you must remember who you serve. Remember the name of the Lord. Yes, God. The second key to victory this year is to keep his covenant. Thank you, Jesus. We're in covenant relationship with Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To keep his covenant. He said, so often do this as remembrance of me. Remember his body that was sacrificed for us. Yes, God. Remember the blood that was shed for us. There's victory in that. He has yes, conquered God. the works of sin and death. So we got to keep his covenant. It's constantly remember his name. Constantly remember the covenant Thank that we you, have Jesus. with him. Thank you, God. And the third thing that I want you to remember. Don't allow your hearts to turn from the living God. You Lord must God. circumcise your heart. Yes, God. Mm. Circumcise your heart. This is the third key to victory. You have to remove that flesh this year. Oh my God, nobody on, wants to on. hear this. Nobody I understand. We hear. have to crucify that flesh this year and every single work of the flesh, we must crucify this year if we come are on. to have victory from yes, here God. and here on out. And lastly, keep our feet pressing forward in the ways of God. We must grow in knowledge of God and his ways. We must abandon these worldly ways. Yes, God. And we must live the way God has called us to live. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Amen. First Samuel chapter 17. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, here we're in the story of the, the great time of Samuel, Samuel who was a prophet uh, of God. Uh, he has already ordained Israel's first king, uh, who was King Saul. And uh, Saul was having some success. He was doing great until he disobeyed God and wanted to do things his own way, half obedient. Oh my God. God had uh, commanded him through Samuel uh, to, to do some things. And King Saul decided to do them, but half do them. He didn't complete the full order of what he was supposed to do. And that's another thing I want to bring to our attention that your good intentions are no longer good enough. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on, talk come to on, me. Your on. good intentions are no longer good enough. This year of 2022, it must be complete and whole obedience to God or you will be rejected. Oh my God. Uh, 
And so King Saul he had good intentions, but he was not fully obedient to God and he did things his own way. And because he rejected the word of the Lord, God rejected him as king Come on. over Israel. Come on. So we must be obedient to God's word. Good intentions are no longer good enough. So Samuel was instructed by God to go ahead and anoint another king whom God had chosen. Uh, and it was a boy named David. Uh, he was the son of Jesse. Come Jesse on. had eight sons. Mm -hmm. uh, David was the youngest. He was the baby boy, uh, if you will. And God had chosen not the oldest, not the firstborn, but the, actually the youngest. Mm -hmm. My God. Because God does not care about the outward appearance, but he cares about the inner man. He is concerned about the heart. He don't judge the outward appearance. He just the heart. So in 2022, don't be spending all your money, time, and resources on your flesh on the outside. It's time to beautify the inside. Can somebody talk to me today? Come on. It's time to beautify the inside. Stop doing the plastic surgery on your flesh and start doing some surgery, some Ooh. circumcision of the heart this year. Can Come we on. do that? We're going to do that. We're going to crucify this old flesh. It is no victory in this flesh. Come on. And so um, Samuel anointed King David as king, as God had instructed. And the Bible records that from that day forward, the spirit of the Lord was upon him. Come on. Come when on. you anointed, oh my God, the spirit of God, his presence dwells with you. Um, us as New Testament believers, I'm so glad that God is not only on us, but he in us. Oh my God. Come on, come on. So now 24 mm -hmm. seven, we dwell, we live in the yes, power sir. of God. The Holy Spirit empower us and cause us to walk in his ways. The Holy Spirit empower yes, us man. to come crucify on. this flesh. Oh yes, victory is ours through the name of the Lord. Oh, let me not get too excited. Let's get into this text. Chapter 17, verse 1. The Bible says, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shokoth, which belongs to Judah. Yes, God. Come and on. pitched between Shokoth and Azekah and Ephedanian. Verse 2. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Glory to God. And the Philistines stood on a mountain, follow me, on the one side. And Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. Come on. Come and the on. Bible says, and there was a valley. Mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. them. Yes, sir. Come on. So here's a picture of Israel's army on one side of the mountain. And you have Israel's long-term, long-time enemy called the Philistine. They're on the other side of the mountain. And the only thing dividing them is a valley. Hmm. There's something significant about valleys. Mm -hmm. When there's a time of battle, they don't do it on a mountaintop. Come on. You have Come to on. go low on the lowland and to do battle. Uh, the valley is mm -hmm. a lowland, a uh, low track of land That's good. that on. extends between hills and mountains. Mm -hmm. um, in the valley, normally there are streams of water flowing. Um, it's good for vegetation. A lot of people were planting corn and everything in the valley. Many yes, people God. built communities where not on a mountaintop, but in the valleys. A lot of battles um, and possession of land was won where not on a mountaintop, but in the valley. It is something significant about valleys. Yes, God. Come on. A lot of us been on mountaintops too long. Mm, 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 you know, got so elevated this year that you forgot what it was like to do battle in the valley. Mm -hmm. You forgot what it was like mm -hmm. to walk Come through the on. valley of the shadow of death. Come on here. 
And so now, because you've been on the mountaintop so long, when it's time to do battle in the valley, you don't know how. Oh, yes. And now the grandmother that used to pray for us is no longer here. The mama that used to pray for us is no longer here. Mm. The auntie that used to fast and, and, mm -hmm. and go before God and on, is no on. longer here. And now you left wondering, what am I to do? The older generation that, that showed us how to labor before God, to tarry before God. They prayed, they fasted, they showed us how to intercede and to push into God and to entreat God's favor. And they taught us how to battle in the spirit. They called upon the name of the Lord. Lord, now we seem that that generation is going home to be with the Lord. And now we're left wondering what to do. We don't know how to do battle mm -hmm. in the valley no more. Come on. We've been on the mountaintops too long based off of our grandparents' prayers, based off of our grandparents' labor uh, and the generation that was before us. Come but on. now God is calling us to the valley. It's time to get low. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to get low now. It's time to come off of that mountaintop and get down into the valley to do battle because God have ordained victories yes, there. God. Verse four says it like this. Mm -hmm. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath come of on. Gath, who height was six cubits in a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. Uh -huh. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, yes, and Lord one Jesus. bearing a Thank shield you, went before him. This man had some heavy stuff you, on him. Thank you, Jesus. He was weighted. He was glorious in battle. Yes, God. This man named Goliath actually means splendor, mm. means to be glorious. And this man was known as a champion. He was, he was glorious in battle. He was the Philistine's prized possession. He was the Philistine's secret weapon. Mm, 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 mm. That's good. And Goliath towered over men. And he had this weighted armor on. It was a man of war. There was a man that you didn't want to stand before. People was terrified from his physique, his, his mm, presence. Mm, 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 mm. Come on. Goliath had the ability to intimidate people just by his presence before he even got to them to fight them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. And so the Bible says in verse 8 that he stood and cried out unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Come on. Am not I a Philistine and your servants to Saul? Choose a man for you and let him come down to me. Come on. Pick him out. Line him up. I want to fight. We, ain't, we, can, we can skip all of this. We can just do it. Just me and the man that you choose. And if, verse 9, if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Come on, come on. So Goliath served notice to the armies of mm -hmm. Israel that, hey, this is not only about to be a battle, but somebody is going to die here today. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, my God. So he he was fight. not fighting come just on. to fight and win. He was fighting to kill. Uh, many of us, we show up to a battle, but we don't fight to kill. Hmm. Hmm. You're still dealing with some things in your heart, like the bitterness, unforgiveness, Ooh. lust, and all of these things. And you're taking all these programs, but you're not fighting to kill it. Mm -hmm. You're only fighting to control it. Oh, my God. Too many of us are fighting to control anger. So many of us are fighting to control lust. So many of us are fighting to control manipulation and lying. But you're not fighting to kill it. Mm. This year, 
You have to fight to kill it. You have to crucify it. You have to destroy it. Or right, these things will be just like a lion coming out morning and evening to taunt you. It will always show back up. It will never lay down and die unless you what? Kill it. And the Bible says that Goliath said, if you win, we will be your servants. But if I win, you will serve me. That's the same thing that's going on with alcoholism and drug addiction and pride and lust. If you don't kill it, my friends, pride, you will be a servant of pride. You will be a servant of lust. You will be a servant of all these things that are destroying your life. But if you do kill it and make it your slave, you kill it, then you will be victorious. So don't come to play. Come for battle. Come, come fighting to kill. Come on. Oh, my God. Let me not get too excited. Come on, Brian. Let's go. Verse 10. <laughs> and the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Goliath defied the armies of Israel and he taunted them. And the Bible says in verse 11, when Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, the Bible said that they were dismayed and greatly afraid. That word dismayed means terrified. This is a picture of psychological destruction. This man, Goliath, taunted them and dismayed them and terrified them and had them in so much fear to the point that it destroyed them psychologically. Come on, come on. Come and on. so many of us, we are entering in 2022 dismayed. We're terrified. Come on. We're psychologically have been beaten down and destroyed. Mm, 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 mm. The talks of COVID, the talks of Delta, the talks of uh, Omicron, all the shootings, the killings, everything that's going on in the world, sex trafficking, abuse, anger, mass shootings. These things have terrified us and destroyed us psychologically. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. They were terrified. Thank you, Jesus. To the point where they couldn't even fight. They were paralyzed by fear. Thank Can't you, even do battle because you've been destroyed psychologically. Ooh, come on, come Your on. mind is so riddled with fear Ooh, come on, baby. that you can't even do battle, let alone talk about a victory. Come you on. don't forgot when the last time you Jeez. even won a battle. Jeez. You forgot even how to fight and you don't even have the strength to fight. Why? Because the enemy has psychologically destroyed your ability and will. And so the Bible records that they were greatly afraid, not just afraid, but greatly. Many of you come into 2022 with the same fear. You're greatly afraid. You don't even know what to expect Ooh, this year. God. Ooh, God. You don't even know what to expect this year and you're terrified. Come on. You're paralyzed. You don't even have the strength to fight. You're hoping that nothing else happens. Jesus. Ooh, you're just speak. hoping that nothing else happens. Speak as this oracle. You're scared of the battle. You know you feel it. You sense it. You know it's coming. You just want to win. And you don't even know and believe that you can make it. You just really counting your number. When am I next? Oh, God. Come on. Come on. And you psychologically destroyed. And the enemy has taken control over you. He has built strongholds up in your mind that you don't even believe that you can win. Come on. Come you don't on. even believe that you can win. Jesus. But God sent us to tell you that he have ordained victory Come for on, you. Jesus. He have established oh. victory Glory for you. Teach it. You don't Teach have it. to be afraid no longer Speak. because there is victory through his Glory name. To God. Oh my God. Glory to God. Come on. Verse 12. Come verse 12. On. Verse 12. Jesus. Jesus. My God. You, now God. David was the Thank son of the Ephraite of Bethlehem, oh. Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons, and the man went among him for an old man in the days of Saul. In verse 13, he said he, he sent his three eldest sons. Thank you, Jesus. And they followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle with Eliab, the firstborn, and the next was Abinadab, and the third, Shema. Again, see, don't skip over verses like this. There's significance in this. 
Come on. There's a reason why they recorded that Jesse was an old man. Come on. Because if he was not an old man, he still had his strength. That means he can go with Saul to fight the battle. Yes, God. But their father was too old in age and couldn't fight the battle. Oh, so he had to send what? His son. Yes, God. And like I said before, mm -hmm. you can't take grandma mm -hmm. into battle with you. You can't take mama into battle with you or daddy into battle with you no more. The, the, the elders that we used to lean on and depend on, you can't take them with you into this battle this year. Mm -hmm. So your hands have to be trained for war in the spirit. That's why it's so important that we got to crucify the flesh because you can't win a spiritual battle in the flesh. You will be defeated every time. And so the Bible said that his three eldest sons followed Saul to the battle. Verse 14, and David was the youngest and the three eldest followed Saul. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 15, but David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Verse 16, and the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself you, 40 days. Dang. This Philistine, this, this giant, this Goliath taunted them from morning to evening every day. As many of you waking up every morning in torment. As soon as you get up, you're in torment. As soon as you lay down, you're in torment. Yes, God. Verse 17, and Jesse said unto David, his son, take now for thy brethren an ephah, of this porch corn and these 10 loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren yes, God. and carry these 10 cheeses, these 10 cheeses unto the captain of their thousand and look how their brethren fare and take their pledge. Basically, Jesse was sending David to go not only bring his brother food, but to also to get information. Jesse wanted to know what's going on out there in that yes, battle. God. How y'all doing? Are y'all okay? Jesus. What's going on? So uh, he sent David out there to exchange information, to get mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. yes, from God. what's going on. So oh. verse 19, the Bible said, now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. I told you valleys. They were in the valley. That means there was battling. Mm -hmm. There was fighting with the Philistines. Come on. And David rose up early, Jesus. verse 20, in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for battle. So for Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array army against army. Thank you, Jesus. That is why you can't afford to be in this year not knowing what side you're on. Ooh-wee, come on, come on. Come you on. have to choose what army are you a part of. Mm -hmm. Come on. What are you, you on the Lord's side or are you on the enemy side? We'll yes, on. this year you have to choose sides. And for those of you that have chosen the Lord but have backslidden, it's time to return mm -hmm. to the Lord. You have to choose side. There is no longer room for to be a middleman. It's no longer you, time Jesus. for you to be double-minded. Yes, you God. have to choose what side are you fighting on. So the Bible said that they shouted for the battle. That they, mm -hmm. they, they got in battle array, army against army. Verse 22, and David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage mm -hmm. and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, hmm, the mm -hmm. Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, mm -hmm. out of the armies of the Philistines and yes, spake God. according to the same words. But this time the Bible said, but David heard him. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. The anointed one mm -hmm. heard him this yes, time. God. The one that the spirit of the Lord was upon heard Goliath this time. Hmm. Oh yeah, he had the right one this day. Hmm. 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 
And so the Bible records in all the men of Israel, verse 24, when they saw the man, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were so afraid. Mm -hmm. When they saw Goliath, the people ran. So they was doing good with the rest of the Philistines. We can fight all day. Oh, yeah, we can fight. We can battle. But soon as Goliath showed up, the secret weapon showed up, that pornography problem showed up, See? that fornication problem showed up. I was doing good with all these other battles. I can win that. That one big thing that Goliath showed up in my life, and automatically I lose all fight and I run back. Come on, come the on. Bible said come that as soon as they saw him, Thank you, Jesus. they fled from him Glory and were sore afraid. Verse 25, and the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Have you seen him? Mm -hmm. Surely to defy Israel is he come up and it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Mm -hmm. And David spake to the man that stood by him saying, what should be done to the man that killed this Philistine and take away the reproach or the shame from Israel? He like, what, what's going on? What's going to be done? Come on. And for who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Yes, God. That he should defy the armies of God. Who is mm -hmm. this uncircumcised Philistine? That he should defy the armies of the living God. Come on. Who is this Philistine that come out to mock Thank you, Jesus. the armies of the living God? Who is this Ooh. Philistine that come out to taunt and Thank discredit you, my yes, God in this army and his people? Who is the enemy coming out to, to abuse us and to provoke my God in us? Who is this? Come on. Come on. The Bible said that they would say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Come on. That's the book. That word uncircumcised, we know what circumcised means. Come it on. means remove, remove all the foreskin. Come on. But if, if you go back to Genesis 17, at verse 11, you will see that circumcision was a token or a mark. If you tuned in to our series before, you know what a mark means. When God marks something and he names something, yes, he God. marks it. Um, and so the mark for the people of God was oh, to be man. circumcised. Come on. Come on. And so verse 11 said in Genesis 17 said, you should circumcise the flesh Come of on. your foreskin. Yes, Lord and it shall be what? A token of the covenant between me and you. Yes, so God. the circumcision was a mark or a token or Come a on. sign that they were in covenant with God. Thank you, Father. Come on. So David, when he's here saying, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He was saying, who is this person who have the audacity to defy our living God and the people of God? You're not in covenant with him. So now right. you don't even know Come that you're looking at this army defying this army, but you don't know that we're in covenant with God. And if you know something about covenant, if you've been tuning in, you know that whoever you're in covenant with, whoever Whoever their enemies are they is now your, your enemies. enemies. Come on. And so David was saying he must not know that you come out to taunt us and defy us, but we're the covenant people. Oh my God. That we're in covenant with God. So not only you are you taunting us, or you defying us, but you're defying the living God. Come on. And so now he have a host angel armies to do battle for us. You don't even know who you messing with. Come on. So for who is this uncircumcised Philistine yep. that on. he should defy the armies of the yep. living God? Mm -hmm. And so today's time, we don't have to have circumcision of our removal of our foreskin in the flesh to be in covenant with God. But the circumcision now is not of the flesh, but now it's the circumcision of the heart in today's time. In the New Testament, God says, circumcise your heart, remove the foreskin of the flesh of your heart, put off the works of the flesh, 
That's how you be circumcised. God said, I will put a new heart within you and put a spirit within you and will yes, cause God. you to walk in my ways. When you enter into covenant with God, this is what happens. When you enter in a covenant with God and now he puts a new spirit within us, which is the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit empowers us to walk in the ways of God. So we are a covenant people still. And the covenant principles still apply to us today. So verse 27, and the people answered him after this manner saying, so shall it be done to the man that killed him. Verse 28, and Eli, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eli's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why come thou here? And with whom has thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart, for thou art come down that thou might see the battle. Come on. So the, the, the brother got mad. Oh, yeah, he got mad. See, oftentimes when you have the spirit of the Lord upon you and you are anointed, a lot of times that leaves room for you to be misunderstood. Oh, my God. A lot of times that make uh, that make that leaves room for you to be misunderstood right. because you operate because the just shall live by faith because you live in faith and you move in faith and you walk in faith and the spirit of the Lord is upon you and you're not afraid you're being strong and courageous as God has commanded you and you moving with the power of the Holy Ghost a lot of times people will misunderstand you come on come on they 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 mistake it for being prideful. They'll mistake it uh, for you not meaning no good because you're not bowing down in fear. But David said, hey, hey, hold up, man. What have I done now? You can tell there's been an ongoing problem between him and his brothers because he said what I did now. You, 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 fussing, you, you, you fussing at me now. You think I'm causing trouble. Is there not a cause here? So David was saying, isn't there a problem here? It's not my fault. There's a problem going on, on. here. I didn't, I didn't start this. Come and on. so David turned from his him towards another and spake after the same matter, verse 30. And the people answered him again after the former matter. And verse 31, and when the words were heard, which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul and he sent for him. So word got out that David was inquiring about this. That's it. Come on. So they came to Saul like, hey, man, there's somebody out here talking reckless. Yes, God. <laughs> there's somebody out here talking about like he, he really bought that action that he want to do some fighting with Goliath. Yes, Lord Jesus. So there's somebody that's not afraid. And so Saul wanted to know who was this person. So he like, well, bring, bring him to me. I want to know who this is. Come on. Verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but the youth, and he a man of war Come from on. his youth. Come on. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. See, David started writing his, he started telling his testimony. Remember, I told you, if you want to have testimony. victory okay. in on. this year, you got to remember the name of the Lord. You got to remember the battles that he have won and yeah, fought yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, 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 you got to remember how he made a way out of nowhere. You got to remember that your God had been faithful to you. So David started running down this resume to yes, um, King Saul. And he was saying in verse 35, and I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his yes, mouth. Sir. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and I smote him and slew him. 36. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Thank you Jesus. Seeing he have defied the armies of the living God. Yes God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. Come on. Come on. So David was remembering the name of the Lord. He was remembering the testimonies of how yeah, God yeah, had yeah. brought him through. Just like God delivered me from 2019 and 2020 into 2021, oh, he's going to be the same God that delivered me in the year 2022. And so yeah, King Saul on. had no choice but to respect his mind. And he said, go. Come on. And the Lord be with thee. The Lord is saying today, go. Because I am with you. 
Jesus. And this year, he is with you. Come on, come on, Jesus. Come you are on. not alone. He is still a God of battle. Verse 38. This is about to get good. Come on, come on. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. Somebody tell somebody next to you that I can't go with these. I can't go with these. I, I can't go with I these. Can't with I can't these. come, come into year 22 with this same old stuff. I can't go with these. Come on. These don't, these don't work right here. I can't go into 2022 with manipulation. That's come not going to work this go. year. I can't you go into me. 2022 uh, with lying. That is not going to work this come year. On, I can't go into 2022 with witchcraft. That's not going to work this Do year. I can't go come into 2022 with this bottle in my Same hand old, drinking. I can't go in. I, I got to put this weed down. I got to put this K2 down. I have to put these drugs down, these pills down. I cannot go come on. into 2022 with this same old stuff. Come on. I have to take this stuff Come off. On. However, I use these things to cope and just to get by in 2021. Yes, I cannot take it into 2022 if I want the victory. And so David said, I cannot go with these. And the Bible says, and David put them off of him. Somebody, somebody shake it off. Say, put, get it off of me. Get it off. Get it off yes, of me. God. I can't go into battle with this yes. mess. Get it off of me. Glory to God. Come on. And the Bible says, and he took his staff. Mm. In his hand, and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 41, and the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him, and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, the Bible says that he disdained him. Yes. The word disdain means to consider something or someone worthless. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's a picture of treating something that is valuable yeah, yeah, in a yeah. worthless manner. And so, so the Philistine was looking at David because he was young. He was red, ruddy, right? And he had a fair countenance, meaning he was good looking, right? Eli was looking at this good looking red boy yes, that was young mm -hmm. and he's a man, a warrior. And he was looking at him like, man, what you doing coming out here to me? Yes, God. Man, you're too pretty to be trying to fight me. You heard me. <laughs> okay. He looked at him as worthless. Yes, God. Come on. And so the Bible says the Goliath disdained him. Verse 43. And the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that thou come out here with, with staves? Yes. And the Philistines curse, watch this. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. See, what you are seeing here is a picture of not just a, a man to man fight, yes, but God. Goliath was cursing David God. by his God. Dagon yes. was the God of the Philistines. Yes, God. So Goliath was coming in the name of his God, which is Dagon, and David was coming in the name of the Lord. Come on. And so in verse 45, oh my God, I told you it's a yes, spiritual God. battle going on. And then it said David to the Philistine, thou come to me with a sword and yes, with God. a spirit and with a shield. But watch this. This is your key verse. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of yeah, hosts, yeah, 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 yeah. the God of the armies of Israel, who thou has defied. That is half of your problem right there. You are taking this battle way too personal and you have forgotten that the battle belongs to God. Come on. Yes, Lord. This is not your battle because you know why? Because you're in covenant with God and God takes it personal when the enemy try to comes after you. So God steps in and he gives you the power to on. gain victory. Come on. He has ordained victory Glory for you. Yes, and so the Bible says that David came to him with the name of the Lord. 
And verse 46, this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. I'm not only going to be delivered, but I'm going to smite thee. I'm going to take your head off, he said. I'm going to take thy head from thee. I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth, here's your key verse, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly should know that the Lord saved, not with sword and spear. Watch this. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. In Christ, in Jesus Christ, there is victory. And the battle belongs to God. He has ordained victory. He has already ordered victory for you. And so when you start to look at life... Through that perspective and through those lenses that God have already ordained victory for you, it changes the way you do battle. It changes the way you live your life because you know that victory is already established. And it was established through Jesus Christ who have died on the cross for our sins, who have got up out of that tomb, was resurrected and seated on the right hand of the Father with all power and authority. Yes, we still have victory today over sin, over death, over every evil work of the flesh. We have victory. So this year, we're going to go through this thing because you're going to gain victory in all these areas of your life. And this year is going to be your best year. It's going to be your best year for the rest of your life because you're going to be going forth in the name of the Lord.